Freedom Island. Fortunately, there was already some trash behind the uh, tire store. And you know that song, uh, You Can Get Anything You Want at Alice's Restaurant. Well, you know, he tells that story. He says, instead of two little piles of trash, I have one big pile of trash. So I didn't carry his trash, my brother's trash, back to the old house. I left it with the tire store trash. And then I walked back over. I had some hand sanitizer because of leftover COVID, you know, stuff. So I got some of that out of my gym bag, hand sanitized myself, looked around, snuck up like kind of around the, you know, like dun, 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 you stupid, but they was all asleep. I think they stayed up late watching TV and uh, didn't wake up, didn't see me out the window. So I got around the edge of the house snuck, got my correct bag, uh, poked a little tiny hole in it just to make sure, put my eye in there, I seen my cables and stuff. I thought, all right, you know, it was much lighter than the trash bag. You'd think I would have noticed that, but nope, nope, nope. Almost left my water canteen. I got a special travel water canteen just to come on this trip with. I almost left that because I put everything down to kind of get the to go through the trash and everything and I picked up my gym bag but I almost didn't bring my canteen and it's uh you can't get them just everywhere there's a kind of plastic you can get that goes in like an army canteen holder and it's shaped like an army navy canteen but it don't have that horrible plastic taste it's more healthier I guess or whatever but I don't care about that it just it don't taste like crappy plastic so uh I almost love my good canteen there ten dollars just for the canteen plus I had to buy for the the holder and well anyway I got that so I got my canteen got my gym bag got the right trash bag took that around the tire store was busy but they didn't see me they didn't notice I had put trash that was a good thing I went over by the edge of the road because I knew them people in the donut shop was going to think that I was a uh, a real homeless person and then I was going to try to ask to use the bathroom and uh, they don't like stuff like that around here so I had some uh, regular kitchen trash bags that was inside the big bag and then the big bag had the little bags in it and the little bags had the electronic stuff so I took the little electronic bag oh you know what I'm trying to say I took the thinner regular like kitchen trash bags out and those had the electronics in it. And I could get that to go in my gym bag. So that part was going better. And then I had the leftover trash bag. And I was going to just pitch it. And then I thought, well, here's my tarp, my poncho, my fashion statement. If I need a shirt, I guess. This could be if I had to go to the bathroom and I didn't have nowhere else to go, I guess I could use that. See, because I am a little bit like a person that could live on the side of a mountain. So I rolled that up and put that in the gym bag, which was a tight fit, but I got it in there. I did start to look like a homeless person again that was carrying everything with me. It didn't look like I was going to a gym. It looked like I lived out of my bag. Underneath the stripy awnings of the donut shop, they, they have two big old plate glass windows in the front. So I could leave my bag right where I could keep my eye on it, kind of next to the trash can there. So I went in the stripy awning uh, donut shop and I got me uh, a crawler and an apple fritter, which was too much greasy dough. And I didn't think about it till later and I was on the bus and then I had regrets. But, you know, I just wasn't in a place to think about travel food. I just was hungry. So I got what I like. So I got me a couple donuts and I got me a medium coffee and uh, I put some cream ore in it. And I stirred up a little stir thing, and then I come out, and I had set that gym bag under the awning of the window there, and it was dripping. I think they must have come out and watered the plants. You know, they had the window boxes underneath the awning in front of the windows there, and they had some um, coleuses in it. And they'd come out, and they'd give those coleuses a little rinse, and then I think they must just have took the hose and 
I mean, either that it was dew, I don't know, but I think somebody must have took the hose and give them, you know, stripe awnings and the wind that's a little dust off, I guess, with the hose. And it was mostly dry, but it had dripped a little bit. So, of course, it dripped in the gym bag. And, of course, I didn't really do up the top of the plastic bag because it wasn't raining or nothing. So I, I thought I'd have time when I got on the bus to get my stuff all organized in there. Oh, mercy God. So I calmed myself down, I took my food, and uh, I went over and I thought, you know, if I have some coffee, I can get myself straightened out. So I sat down, they have a, a picnic table thing outside there that's got the same kind of, like, umbrella over it that's the same as the stripey awning uh, over the windows there for their design. That I checked and that had not got the hose down, so that was dry, so I was dry, so I sat down. And it didn't seem like water had got on anything but the e-reader. The e-reader itself didn't seem like it was wet, but it was trying to work its way. It's got like a protective case around it. So I got that off real quick. I peeled that off. It's got like a rubbery kind of plasticky thing. It's really meant for little kids, but it's just the kind I need. It, it's got a big old, it's almost like when them mats, they tumble around like the little ones tumble around on the floor and they got those uh, big puzzle piece type mats, you know, that they put on the floor and then they can do their flip overs and stuff. Well, that's what was around the e-reader. So, uh, that was good that even though I put it under the wet thing, it not only kept it from banging around and stuff, but it also kept most of the water off of the e-reader. It looked like it might have got just a little bit under one edge of the screen, and I wasn't sure if it was going to permanently be under there or if it was going to straighten out or what. So I just set it out on the table. The sun was coming out a little bit, and I just let it sort of dry itself out, and I put the case separate. And I just wrapped it up like when I was ready to go, I just wrapped it up again in a towel and I left that cover off of it so it wouldn't steam or whatever if it was wet on the inside. And uh, when I finally did get here to this motel, uh, I unwrapped it from the towel, looked and everything's all right. Even the screen, it had lost that blurry up in the window. So I put the cover back on it again and that's good because the charger thing don't seem like it wants to go in the smartphone. It probably will go, but I'm afraid to try to force it in. I'm tired. And um, then the the uh, flip phone does not record very good, and I don't know how to get the messages off of the, the uh, how to, you know, how to save them. I can record on there, but then I don't know how to get the sound recordings off of there and get it anywhere. So, and the laptop is charging up in the motel room and I can't use it and charge it up both at the same time so it's a good thing this e-reader is okay and that in the future I gotta remember as I'm traveling stuff just to take a second and tie a knot in the end of a bag or something if I'm gonna wrap something up in plastic so that was a lucky break thank you God that this didn't get ruined so uh, got myself gathered up went across to the bus got on the bus, and then there was confusion. Like, I went to Greyhound, and I got a ticket, and went and sat where I was supposed to sit. And then they came on, and they talk, and they're rattling off everything. It, it's like a... It would sound better. You know on the Flintstones where there's that bird that's the phonograph record stylus, you know, and the, they put its beak down on the record and it, you know, plays the old record on the Stone Age turntable and then the sound comes out a horn or something, I don't remember, like some kind of fossil or something that makes the sound, right? Or maybe the bird sings it, I don't know, its beak is on the record, I can't remember how it makes the sound, but... Or maybe one of them old Victrola records, like the RCA dog is like his master's voice and listening to the big horn. It looks like a tuba horn. That's what the Greyhound thing sounds like. There, here it is, you know, 21st century. And whenever they talk to you on the Greyhound, it comes over the sound system and it sounds like... <laughs> you know like that 
I could not understand. I think it's a robot thing. I think they have a button that they push in there and it makes a recording and then maybe it's wore out. I don't know. It was horrible. I could not understand anything they said. But she had told me gate four, which gate means door at the bus station. But finally, here come a bus. I went out. I said, I'm going to Detroit. And he pointed. And I realized now what he meant was he was showing me where he wanted me to put my gym bag to put down for them because they load it for you. You know, they lift up the wings underneath the bus and then they shove your stuff under there, which is why I wouldn't have my electronics separate, right? Because I knew they that's how they do, right? They just throw everything under there and who knows, an anvil or whatever somebody's got under the bus is all going to be banging and rolling and, and all that stuff, right? So I had got my electronics separate, so thank goodness for that, but uh, he meant drop my bag under there, but then I didn't understand what he meant, so I went over, and uh, instead of being where they load up the bus I was going to get on, I went over to the door of the other bus, and he was outside, the driver, and he was secret smoking. They're not supposed to smoke anywhere now, but he had his back to the station, and he was kind of away from the window, and you could smell it. You couldn't really see it, but he was holding it between his, you know, back and the, the back of the building. He was acting like he was looking through, a, like, a paper or something, you know, for the bus list or something. And I said, should I just go ahead and get on? Because he had not lifted up no wings or anything for to load uh, luggage, you know. He said, yeah. So I got on, and I just brought my gym bag with me, and I thought, well, maybe they've got a rack up over the top and they did and there was room there so I just went ahead and put my gym back up over the seat and it didn't seem like it was assigned seats or nothing like that it was just it didn't have no seat number on my thing or whatever so I sat down and then I snuck out my coffee cup which you were not supposed to take on the bus but I figured if he was going to smoke I was going to drink the rest of my coffee and the gym bag has a thing for putting your water bottle on the side so I had put my co top on my coffee good and then they put a little thing in there to tell you your coffee's hot, like a little warning or whatever. So I jammed that in the, the little place that you drink out of in the cup to hold it. So I could get my coffee out. And I had a last little bite of donut uh, in the bottom of the bag. So I was pretty happy. So then he came on. And then whoever made the speaker for the bus must have made the same speaker for the bus station. Because... He came on to talk, and there wasn't but me and a lady that was asleep in the back. She must have been, they must have been from wherever they came before, right? And then he either told her they were in Indianapolis, or he didn't care, he didn't see her, I don't know. I hope she was all right. I hope she knew where she was, but they probably knew where she was going, I figured. So she's asleep in the back, so it was just me. He got on, he looked around, he looked at his watch, uh, he shut the door, and then he said, there's, there's, there's 10, 15, blah, blah, blah. And, well, of course, the time was all wrong. But it's because I had missed my earlier city bus to get to Greyhound. And they had told me at the station, if I miss my bus, you don't go back to the ticket and bother them and all that. You just bring your ticket. And it's still a valid ticket for, like, 12 hours, 24 hours or something like that. You show it to them. You tell them what happened. And they'll just put you back on the bus it's just easier for them to use your same ticket you know and to all that so he told the time and the time didn't match what I had but then you know I was all screwed around anyways so he starts pulling around and then he got on uh, the highway and everything on the not the highway well you know I guess it is the highway but you know the the outer belt you know it's going around and um, I felt like he was going around the wrong way I must I think I'm smart, and then sometimes I'm slow to catch on. I did notice it felt like he was going around the wrong way. Like, to go from where we was at, to take the outer belt round to where we needed to go, we only needed to go one quarter of the way around the circle. You know, it's like a big circle around the city. So, where we got on, we just needed to go around and then go north, right? And um, it seemed to me like we were doing the three-fourths of the way around, going around the other way. But I thought, well, maybe there's construction. I haven't rode on this forever. 
maybe they got road construction, maybe it's TSA or, or, or uh, you know, security or something. Uh, who knows? I, so I did not question it. But then we came around where you take 31 to go down south, down in them blowed up uh, hills where the striations of the geologic layers and all that stuff. When you get off of 495 at 31, there's a big old bowling pin. I don't even know if the bowling alley is still there or not, but there's a great big old painted bowling pin to show you it's a bowling alley. And that is where 31 is. And he he put on his bus, tick, 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 and I thought he's going to get off on this exit. And I thought, where are we going? Well... I never looked at the sign on the bus nor nothing, and of course that I was on the he and he didn't look at my ticket because he was out there smoking. He figured that I knew where I was going. That guy who indicated he thought I understood what he meant. Nobody understood nothing, and so there I was. So I didn't tell the driver that I didn't intend to go this way because he wasn't going to turn around. He's got a set route. And they're not gonna, I mean, that's your own fault. If you cannot have the sense to get on your own bus, that's on you, right? So I thought, well, I'm going to be taking a, a very exciting trip to Mooresville, possibly Martinsville. But I fortunately, I didn't get as far as that. They had a place that they pulled over sooner. They've changed the schedule a bit since I've been over there. So they pull over for what they call a comfort stop, which is a bathroom stop. And um, when we got off, so when he pulled over, you know, he was going to get off. And I thought, well, he's going to smoke again. And he said, comfort stop, you know, 10 minutes. And then I just brought my gym bag with me. And I said, is there any reason why I can't get off here? And he said, no, you can get off wherever you want. I mean, I can't let you off on the highway. But, you know, at a, a stop or something, you can get off. Do, you know, now, do you've got a ride or something coming for you? And I said, I've kind of messed up my plan. But I got my cell phone and everything. So I'm just going to call somebody, come and get me. And that was not true. But I just thought he probably would be more worried about me if I didn't tell him I had a plan. So he said, all right. So I went over and uh, I found a place to sit down that was a little bit shady. I had some Fritos in my bag, so I took them out and put some of my hand sanitizer in. And then I ate my Fritos. And then I uh, opened up my, my flip phone and I played like I was reading a text. And then I, I poked with my finger like I was answering. And then I left my flip phone open on the table like... Uh, you know, I was waiting for a reply text. So then he got back on the bus and then he leaned out and he said, you sure? And I said, I'm fine. Thank you, sir. And he said, all righty. And then he slammed the door shut and I, and I thought he's probably happy because now he can play whatever music he wants and whoever that was in the back of the bus is asleep. They don't care. So off they went and here I was. So I had to do a little bit of uh, highway hopping because there's a imaginatively named uh, Motel 31 across the highway and um, I had to go across a turn lane, some other kind of a turn lane, a left turn lane, a left lane, and some kind of some other thing, I don't even know what that was for, get on the partition, you know, uh, median thing, and then I thought that they might just find my mummified corpse on the median strip because I couldn't get off the flipping thing. I was standing on there. I wished I would have just stayed on my side. I probably could have walked and 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 walked, but in a mile or two, I would have come to somewhere, some traffic light or crossing or something, but I didn't do it that way. I just went ahead and went, and then, uh, they sped up. The more they could see, I wanted to cross the road. And a couple times, I I got a couple steps in. And then here come like a semi or something. I had to run. and I felt like I was in Frogger, you know. 
I'm telling you, I was probably on that median thing for half an hour, at least. And finally, 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 the only reason I got across is because a tractor trailer was turning. And where they needed to go in, they were blocking, you know, the road for just a second. And I didn't know where he was going, so I thought, the ass end of that truck's going to come along and hit me like a, a flipper in a pinball machine. Poof! Just bam. But it didn't get me. Just some squeaky, scary kind of noises. And then he honked at me, which made me deaf in my right ear. I still can't quite hear. Well, not my fault, bud. But I managed to get across to the parking lot. Uh, the lady at the desk clearly thought I was some kind of a sex worker. But then she looked at my full gymnasium bag. And then she was trying to decide if I was a homeless person or a homeless sex worker. And then I said, I'm not going to be here very long, but I better just stay over. I have to catch a, the Greyhound in the morning to Detroit, and I've already missed the last bus up. So she said, Detroit, you're down here. And I said, I know where I'm at. And she said, you got on the southbound, did you? And I said, yeah. And she said, they do park right next to each other. And I said, now I know it. I didn't know it then. So then she was nicer to me, and she gave me a, a stripy mint, you know, one of them uh, peppermint mints out of the dish. And I don't know if she meant it nice or if she thought my breath was stinky. I wasn't sure which. But anyway, she gave me candy, so that was good. And then she gave me a good deal on a room. She said, uh, you got AAA. And I thought, why well, didn't even drive in here? But she gave me the AAA discount and the senior discount because I could tell she felt sorry for me. Uh, I paid her in cash. I don't think she put it on the book. Uh, she gave me the key. It's one of them, you know, credit card key things. And she said it had air conditioning in there at the room. So I said, all right, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to take a nap. I said, is there any place I can go get something to eat? And she said, there's a big wheel down the road. And I said, how late are they open? She said, 1.30, I think. So I said, okay. So even if I take a nap pretty late, I can still go over and get something to eat. And she kind of gave me a look like she thought I was going to try to look for truck drivers over there or something. But I just thought, I've just ate those crullers. She don't understand. And then I was on the, the bus with it all. No, You know, I didn't want to use the bus bathroom. So uh, I just thought she don't understand where I'm at with this. But I'm not going to be ready to eat for a little while. So I thought, well, I'm going to go in. At least I'll have a shower that I could use in the morning. Uh, it wasn't too bad with the... It was like $54 or something with both discounts. And so uh, that was nice of her. And I'm sure she put a little money in her pocket and that was all right with me. So uh, I had not planned to pay $54 and whatever change it was. But uh, there's nothing you can do sometimes about these things. So, And I kept my bus ticket and I'm hoping that they, you know, will let me on the Greyhound with it. But that's tomorrow's thing.